So for patients who are ineligible for ruxolitinib, generally they are ineligible because they've got too early a stage disease. So in many health economies, for example, the UK is for intermediate to or high risk disease only. In general, in my practice, I would try to get around that by looking at multiple different prognostic scores, trying to make the patient intermediate to risk because ruxolitinib is clearly a very effective therapy and mainstay of treatment. Um, so generally, you know, just trying to be a bit more pragmatic. But there are certain uh, aspects of a disease which can make a patient ineligible for ruxolitinib as well. Principally, that would be severe thrombocytopenia. And so as an emerging therapy, for example, there is pacritinib, which we've known about for a long time, being trialled in the Pacifica study. There's also momolotinib, which has recently been approved in the UK and Europe, as well as by the FDA, which is similar to ruxolitinib, JAK1, JAK2, ACVR1 inhibitor, but um, also uh, can be used for patients who are thrombocytopenic and helps us with transfusion dependence. So an on-target effect of JAK inhibition is anemia. So some of us are reluctant and you know, struggle to manage anemia for patients on ruxolitinib. So those are the main uh, elements that are sort of JAK inhibitor based. And then there are some combination strategies, but for the most part, these involve ruxolitinib. Some strategies targeting anemia, I mentioned the CUR050, there are also LOXL2 inhibitors, and also some of the CALR directed therapies as well, vaccination, monoclonal antibody, bispecific, et cetera, are being used for patients who can't have a JAK inhibitor or who have become refractory or intolerant. So that there's a few, not as many as we would like, agents around for these patients, but there are some.